This video was originally intended for my Deep Space course, which I'm in the process of updating for 2020. So anybody who's purchased that, stay tuned for a big update coming probably mid-September. However, I wanted to make sure that you guys here on YouTube weren't left behind, so I thought I'd upload this video that's going to show you how to properly balance your counterweight and your right ascension declination on the Skyguider Pro and Star Adventure. So hopefully this really helps you out. This is my updated counterweight balancing tutorial for 2020. We're going to start off using the Skyguider Pro and then we'll transition to the Star Adventure. But regardless of the Star Tracker you have, I recommend you watch this entire video from start to finish just because there's a lot of little things I'm going to throw out along the way and if you miss one of those, you might get confused later on. So I really recommend you pay attention and watch the entire video. For those of you using a Move Shoot Move Star Tracker, unfortunately, you're not really going to have a way to even utilize counterweights, which is why I don't really recommend that tracker for deep space. It's mainly a good lightweight Milky Way tracker. So just keep that in mind. I'd still recommend watching this video though. And then you can decide maybe if you do want to upgrade to a larger tracker. If you have the Star Adventure Mini, you can still follow along just fine. As long as you have the Star Adventure Declination Bracket and Counterweight Kit, which you can utilize with your Star Adventure Mini. Before we continue on, I want to explain some of these components I'm using as well. First up, we have this piece from William Optics. It's actually two pieces in one. There's a declination bracket, whatever you want to call it, and then a telescope bracket. I'll have this up on screen so you actually see what it's called. I always forget. But I don't really recommend these components. Not only are they very expensive, they're very heavy. And one of the big problems we have with shooting deep space work is we have a lot of weight. So the more weight we're adding with stuff like this, the worse results we're going to get. And with that said, I don't really recommend buying this. You don't really need it, but that's what I'm going to be using today. For most of you, you should have these components already lying around. You've got the Mickey Mouse ears looking piece right here with four screw holes in it. You need that. And then you need this little telescope mounting bracket. If you're going to be using a telescope anyway, again, there's a lot of little things we're going to cover today. So I'm starting off using a telescope and then we're going to switch to a DSLR and telephoto lens. So regardless of the setup you have, you're going to learn a lot today. But for most of you, if you do have a telescope, just use this piece, grab this piece, put them together like this, line up the holes and screw it together. And if you do that, you now have a much lighter and free version of what I have right here. So I want to make sure we're clear on that. The other thing I have is an extension rod because I normally needed two counterweights. I got tired of lugging around all that weight. So I got this extension rod for $10 when I bought it bundled with the William Optics High Latitude Base. I'd highly recommend this base for just about everybody because it makes things a lot easier at night. These screws are very easy to turn, they're smooth, and when you're trying to do an accurate polar alignment, especially with the Ioptron default base, the screws are so hard to turn, this will be a great investment. And again, if you get this base, look for a bundle where you get the extension rod for 10 extra bucks. That's a great investment. But that's what I'm working with today. And now that you know that, let me show you what I'm actually shooting with currently. Because I'm going to be doing some updates here in 2020 that explain this setup right here. I've got a fancy astrophotography camera, filter wheel, a telescope, which is the Space Cat from William Optics, my guide scope, and then an auto guider. That's what I'm working with right now. It works really well, but everybody using a DSLR and telephoto lens, you're going to be just fine. We'll cover that in a few minutes. So the first thing I want to do is just grab all this, slide it into my telescope mounting bracket after I verify that it's actually tightened down. Because if you saw my 27,000 subscriber special on YouTube, you know I had a very serious <laughs> incident out there on location while I was recording another tutorial like this. And that brings me to an important point. I'm working inside today on a carpeted floor. Just on the off chance, I get butterfingers again and drop everything. And that's also why I'm a little bit flustered. You might be able to tell in the video. So I'd recommend you do that as well. Stay inside today, maybe even put some padding down that way. Worst case scenario, if you're still new at this and something does fall, maybe that'll prevent it from completely being destroyed like what happened to me. All right, so anyway, let's get started. The first thing you need to understand is that we have a right ascension axis, which is this right here. The way you're gonna move that is just by loosening the clutch. And again, this is right ascension. You can almost think of it as kind of like up and down, if you will. It's not really, but kind of. Now that's our right ascension. We also have our declination, which if I loosen this, is right here, kind of like left and right. 
this is our declination. Between our right ascension and our declination, you can reach any portion in the night sky without the need for a ball head. Which brings me to another important point. You do not want to use a ball head with a telescope or telephoto lens because that's going to get you a lot higher. The higher your center of gravity, the more weight you need, and overall you're going to get worse results. So I've configured my declination bracket to have everything mounted on the short end. You'll see there's a little short end up here where my camera's attached and a longer end down here where the counterweight's attached. From the factory, it was actually the opposite. So I had to take everything off, reattach it, and screw it back down. You might want to do the same thing. And I've got a YouTube video that covers this. Uh, just check out my SkyGuider Pro like 2019 full tutorial. But that's what I'm working with right now. For those of you on the Star Adventure, as you'll see, there's a much simpler solution for the Star Adventure users. But I just want to reiterate here that the lower everything is, the better things will be balanced because you won't necessarily need as much weight to balance a heavy setup. So the first thing you always want to do when you get out there on location is balance your right ascension because it's very easy to do. So we're going to loosen our clutch, turn everything horizontal, make sure it's tight. I like to have a hand under the camera as well in case something falls, but in this case, it's okay. And what you want to do at this point is loosen your counterweight and move it in and out. If the camera is really pulling down, like you can see right now, it's pulling down, that means the counterweight's too far in. So you need to move it outwards. If the counterweight's too far out though, it's going to be pulling down. This is very simple. Just move the counterweight until neither side pulls down. But the problem that a lot of you are going to have, especially in the Star Adventure, is that one counterweight might not be enough. That's where this extension rod really came in handy. If you still can't balance it though, like if you don't have the extension rod and only one weight, you could buy a second counterweight for like 20 or 30 bucks, at least the ones from my option, and attach it. So do what you got to do to get everything perfectly balanced where neither side is pulling down. That's your first hurdle. For those of you who want to go the extra mile, you can also make sure that things are slightly east heavy. So let's think about this. If the star tracker is always facing north, then this will be east and this will be west. So with that in mind, if I want this to be east heavy, the counterweight just needs to be a little bit heavier than the camera. And when I mean a little bit, I really mean a little. So let's see if I can actually get this. Right about there maybe. See how it's just barely pulling down? If anything, that might be too much because I only want it just a hair heavier. I'm gonna pull it back a little bit, try that. That's kind of want, what I want to see. It's just barely pulling down. But you have to realize that right now the counterweight side is east heavy, but it's possible that tonight when I'm shooting, my camera is going to be aimed up over here. And if we do that and the camera is on this side, watch what happens. Now we're west heavy. That's not going to work. So what I'm telling you is that depending on the object you're photographing and where it's at in the night sky, you have to factor that in when you're balancing your right ascension if you want to make it slightly east heavy. So in this case, if I am aimed up somewhere over here, the kind of weight needs to come in a little bit. That way the camera side is just barely pulling down. And I'd say this is probably like extra credit, if you will, if you can do this. For most of us, especially the beginners, just drop it horizontal, I don't care what side is which, and make sure another side is really pulling down. If you can do that, it's fine. And again, the reason we want this to be slightly east heavy for those of you who are going for the extra points is because there's little gears inside of here and if everything was perfectly balanced the gears might just be kind of floating like this and that could translate to uh, star shake in your photos because the gears are hitting and it's just not going to work as well but if you had things very slightly east heavy those gears would be locked together at all times and they'd smoothly go from one to the next and that would theoretically give you better results but who knows really with a sky guide or pro star adventure how accurate that's going to be so at this point, I'm assuming you've balanced your right ascension. Again, for most of us, just get it so neither side is pulling down. In my case, right about there is good enough. Now that you've done that, that's half the work done. The other half is our declination axis right here. The way we're gonna balance that one is we need to think about the object we're gonna photograph again. So let's say we're gonna do Andromeda and it's July. That means Andromeda is gonna be up over in this portion of the sky pretty early in the night. If I loosen my clutch, you can see everything's free right now, aim up over there, 
If nothing moves, my declination is already perfectly balanced. We're good to go. That rarely happens though. So what you're probably going to notice is that when you move up to Andromeda, something like this happens where everything starts falling around. That's because in this case, everything is front heavy on my telescope. See that it's pulling down this direction. So the way we're going to fix that is using this long dovetail bracket. That's why this is such a critical component. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to loosen it, firm hand on it and slide it backwards a little bit. Now it's not moving anymore because I balanced it. So if you're too front heavy or too back heavy, you need to fix it. Let's do another example. Let's say I'm aimed up at the Veil Nebula in November, which is going to be up over here. So if I do that, aim it up in this direction, and you can see another reason I don't like these pieces is that they're kind of a pain to turn. But what do we see again? This is really pulling down fast now because it's very front heavy in this orientation. So the way to fix that is to slide everything backwards, tighten it down. Now I'm finally back heavy. You see that? The camera is too heavy at this point because I've slid it too far backwards. So I'll aim up roughly where I need to be, slide it forwards, let go. It's a little front heavy now, but you get the idea. We're basically sliding things forwards and backwards using our telescope mounting bracket and a dovetail plate. That's how we're going to balance our declination for this particular configuration. I should also mention that if you have a zoom lens, you want to be zoomed into the focal length you think you're going to be at, because obviously that's going to throw off the weight distribution. Also attach your lens hood if you're going to be using it, etc. So if I know I'm going to be shooting at like 400 millimeters, I would zoom into about 400 millimeters and then I would balance it for that focal length, even though we're not going to stay there for this full workflow. And we'll cover this more in the on location videos, but I just wanted to throw that in there that you do want to be zoomed into the focal length you plan on using just so that way the weight can be balanced ahead of time, not after the fact when you actually got your object centered up, that's going to ruin everything. So keep all that in mind. Next, what I want to do is grab a telephoto lens and DSLR and show you how to do all this again. So you'll notice I took off the red William Optics pieces, which were giving me a little bit of trouble and they were overly heavy. Now all I need is my little Mickey Mouse here screw piece right here with the screw going through the middle. Normally in the past, what we would have done is just screw this into the bottom of our tripod collar, attach everything to here and balance our right ascension. But today we're balancing our declination as well. That's the most critical component of this tutorial. The way we're going to do that is with this $15 Arca Swiss clamp I got on Amazon. Once you have this simple Arca Swiss clamp or any Arca Swiss clamp really, there in my case was a screw going through the middle of this piece. Take that screw out and then you can follow along. So what I want to do is with my Mickey Mouse ears piece here and my Arca Swiss clamp here, I'm just going to thread the screw up through the bottom of my Arca Swiss clamp. It's very simple to do and it's not going to cost you $80. It's going to cost you 15 bucks at most. It's not the best solution though, because these knobs get in the way. So if that happens to you, you might have to take out one of these screws in the Mickey Mouse ears piece. That way you can actually tighten it down fully like so, and then reattach the screw in another hole. You know, the Ioptron pieces aren't perfect, but they're free and they're light. So we're gonna make the best out of them today. All right, so there we go. All I've done is attach the Arco Swiss clamp through the uh, screw hole right here. Now I can plop this down and I basically have a smaller, cheaper and lighter version of the William Optics parts I was using. The key difference here though, is this is an Arca Swiss clamp, not a dovetail clamp. So this is going to be great for everybody using a telephoto lens. And for that, I've got my new and improved Nikon D750 and Tamron 150 to 600. These are the, camera and lens I dropped in the video, but they've since come back from the repair shop and they're pretty much brand new looking. So on the bottom of my tripod collar, I've got a simple Arca Swiss clamp. Everybody should have one of these lying around if you're a photographer. If not, you can buy them on Amazon. If you're buying an Arca Swiss plate, get the Arca Swiss clamp as well. But once you have your Arca Swiss plate installed to the bottom of your tripod collar, just like we did before, we're gonna slide it in tighten it down. And once you verify it's actually tight, it's not going anywhere, 
Now you can let go. All right. So you'll notice this is just a very streamlined version of what we were doing before. I don't have that big, long, heavy dovetail plate. I don't have those big, heavy William Optics parts. This is much easier to work with. But I wanna do the same exact thing. Again, have your lens hood on if you plan to use it. Turn everything horizontally. And look what happens, even with this big lens, this camera is way too heavy. And this is how far we had to be out with that other setup. So I could probably bring this in right about here Let's see. Yeah, I'm pretty much right at the edge of the original extension rod there, or uh, counterweight rod. And now we're properly balanced in right ascension. Might not also be a bad idea to roughly zoom in where you think you're gonna be at, but that's mainly for declination. So in this case, we're good enough. We've now balanced our right ascension. We're gonna follow the exact same principles that we learned earlier in the video though. We're gonna loosen these two screws here and make sure at night you don't loosen the clamp. That would be very bad because if you accidentally loosen the clamp and not these two screws, this whole thing's gonna slide and you're gonna break your camera lens for sure. That's one of the downsides of working in the dark is that with all these knobs and screws and everything, you can very quickly get confused. So that's why I'm so adamant about doing things slowly and carefully and practicing indoors, just so that way if there is an accident, it might not be as bad. All right. So now what I want to do is after I balance my right ascension is find the object I'm going to photograph roughly. So let's say we're going to do the Whirlpool Galaxy. It's going to be somewhere up there. What do we see? Nothing's pulling down. We're perfectly balanced. Remember your clutch needs to be loose here. If you have your clutch tightened down, this whole thing isn't going to work. So I have my clutch loose so that way this thing can freely rotate as needed. But I'm not going to be shooting the Whirlpool Galaxy at 150 millimeters, it can be like that big. I wanna be at like 600 millimeters for that little tiny galaxy. And now what do we see happening? When I did that, the weight was so front heavy now, the only way to fix that, firm hand on the camera, real firm, <laughs> loosen the knob here on your Arca Swiss clamp, slide everything backwards, tighten it down, still front heavy. So I'm gonna loosen my clamp, slide it back, now we're perfectly balanced. It's that easy. The problem you might have though, is that you just don't have enough room to move forwards and backwards, depending on how big and heavy your lens is. So you, in some cases, you might need to buy a longer Arca Swiss plate that would allow you to slide further on your Arca Swiss clamp. Just bear that in mind, but I'd recommend you start with a smaller, lighter Arca Swiss plate and then upgrade to a larger one if you need it. Because as you saw today, the difference between really front heavy and perfectly balanced was like that much. So you don't need some big long plate necessarily for most people. Let's try one more and then we'll move on to the star adventure. So I'm gonna make sure everything's locked down. This time I'm gonna zoom into maybe 400 millimeters and we'll aim up at the, let's say the Veil Nebula up over here. In this case, it's not going anywhere. We know it's perfectly balanced. However, if I was zoomed in at 150 millimeters, now the camera is pretty heavily pulling down. That means we're back heavy. If we're back heavy, we need to move everything forwards. So I'll loosen the clamp, firm hand on the camera when I do that, slide it forwards, tighten it down, aim roughly where I think I'm gonna be at. It's not pulling down one way or the other. We're good to go. And before we go to the start adventure, let me stress here that, again, you wanna be at the focal length you plan to shoot at because you see there's a big difference in terms of the front heavy or back heavy and it's just better to get all this balance before you actually center up the object and get ready to shoot. That way you'll streamline this entire workflow. All right, so now I'm gonna tear down and I'll grab my Star Adventure and then we'll continue on and I'll show you how that's all gonna work for those of you with those components. First things first, you'll notice I've got the Star Adventure attached to the William Optics base. They market this as a Skyguider Pro base, but you can use it with a Star Adventure. So for those of you who are having problems with your Star Adventure base, like I said, you can always utilize the higher end William Optics one. Now what I wanna do is grab my declination bracket and counterweight and slide it down on here. The first thing I wanna draw your attention to is the height of this declination bracket. The nice thing with this design is that you can very simply just loosen this and slide this down. That's what you're gonna to wanna to do because with any tracker out there, the lower your center of gravity, 
the more this kind of what's going to work for you. If I had things way up here, now my camera's so high up, I'd probably need six counterweights to balance that whole thing. But if I'm all the way down here at the bottom, I should be able to make it with just one. So what I'm going to do now is grab my camera and lens, but we have a problem. We need to attach that $15 Arcus was clamp first. Again, I'd still recommend everybody buy this piece on Amazon. You can get any Argus Swiss clamp, doesn't have to be this one. Once you have it though, push this screw up and just screw it into the bottom of the clamp. It's that easy. It takes two seconds. There we go. So now I've got my clamp attached. I can grab my camera lens, slide it on down. You know the drill by now. All right, once I verify it's secure, we're gonna repeat all the steps we learned in the Skyguider Pro section. We're gonna loosen our clutch, turn everything horizontally, usually trying to have a hand under there. And in this case, the camera's too heavy. And what do you see here? The counterweight's all the way out already. That's one of the problems I have with the Star Adventure is that this little dinky counterweight's never enough for a lot of us. Thankfully, there's a fairly simple solution that doesn't involve buying another counterweight. So let me grab that and we'll move on. Here's the solution I came up with. It's just a Benro ball head. You can use any ball head really. And we have this screw right here. So we're just gonna screw on the ball head. I came up with this idea just because I didn't wanna to have to buy another counterweight. And I don't even think you can buy like just the counterweight, you have to buy the whole rod and everything. So I said, I'm not paying all that money for that. Let me just see, use what I have and see if that works. So now that I've added more weight down below the center point, that should help to balance things. Let's try it again. I'm going to loosen everything, and there we go. It is now perfectly balanced with the help of a ball head. You can see with a little bit of ingenuity, you can save yourself a lot of money. So now that we've balanced our right ascension, we're ready to continue on. If you recall, the first thing we need to do is find the object we want to photograph. Maybe that's somewhere up over there. Now the nice thing with the Star Adventure is we can loosen this clutch down here, that's our declination clutch. Turn everything. But see, we have a problem right now. The Arca Swiss clamp knob is hitting the back of this declination bracket. So this design isn't foolproof, but there's a simple solution. So if you try and turn things and the, the knob here is just hitting and you can't turn it any further, what you wanna do is firm hand on the camera, take it off, find a safe place to put it down, and you'll notice the, the knob is on this side. So the way to fix that is to loosen the screw, pop the whole Arca Swiss clamp off. There we go. And if the screw is on this side, I'm just gonna turn it like that and reattach it. It's that easy. Let's try that again. So I'm gonna grab my camera and lens. Firm hand, because this is how I dropped it last time. Tighten down the knob. There we go. Loosen our declination clutch down here. Turn it. Now I have no trouble reaching that area of the sky. I'm going to loosen my right ascension clutch as well. Aim up roughly where I think I need to be. Then don't forget we want to zoom into the focal length we think we're going to be at. If I'm photographing the Veil Nebula and I want to get just one of them, I'll probably be like maybe even 600. And we see the same issue as earlier. It's pulling down, I'm front heavy. The way I'm gonna fix that is to firm hand on the camera, loosen this knob and slide it back. Aim up there again. That's all there is to it. We're no longer pulling forwards, we're no longer pulling backwards. We've balanced our declination axis and our right ascension axis. And that's gonna put a lot less, a lot less stress on our star tracker. Before we go, there's just a few more points I want to touch on, and I think I've spent enough time today talking about this. The first is that if you have a battery grip on your camera, get rid of it. You're going to add a lot of weight. You're probably going to hit the top of your star tracker, and it's just going to cause you a lot of problems at night. You don't need the battery grip. Even if you're shooting for two or three hours, just come out and check the camera so often. Once the battery's about to die, turn the camera off, put a new battery in, and restart your interval. It's not going to hurt anything. Uh, I'd really recommend everybody do that. If you have a camera that has a battery grip built in, like a D6 or um, whatever else there is, 
I mean, you'll just have to make do with it because the problem you're going to have is that you're probably going to hit the top of your tracker. So you have to slide everything. And I don't recommend you do this. <laughs> slide everything upwards. That way you actually have clearance between the bottom of your battery grip and the tracker. But now watch what happens. If I try and bounce my right ascension, you can't see this in the video, but this is so heavy right now. There's no way I could ever balance it. I would need like at least two counterweights, if not more, just because I move things higher up. So this is really important that you keep this declination bracket as low as possible and ultimately your camera and everything as low as possible. That way you're getting the most out of a single counterweight. That's especially true here on the Star Adventure where this little tiny counterweight hardly weighs anything. All right, well, I think that's all I've got for you today. We covered how to properly balance your right ascension and declination axis on the SkyGuider Pro and Star Adventure, as well as the Star Adventure Mini, because it's gonna use the same components here. The big thing was buying that $15 Arca Swiss clamp. That's gonna allow you to essentially slide everything forwards and backwards, like you see here. And in the process, that will allow you to completely balance your setup. That way you no longer have a really front heavy or potentially back heavy camera and lens. The final point I wanna make is that again, we're doing this balancing process after we've done our polar alignment, but before we try and center up the object. Because you know you wanna zoom in roughly the focal length you think you're gonna be at, aim roughly where you think the object is at, and then once you've done that, balance it from there. That way, after you've found the object and centered it up in the frame and got all your settings dialed in, you know it's gonna be balanced. Because the biggest mistake you can make is forgetting to balance things, getting the object centered up, which could take you up to an hour, and then you realize you're super front heavy, you're like, oh crap. So you have to loosen everything, slide it in and out. That's gonna ruin your alignment. You have to pretty much start all over finding the object and getting it centered. So hopefully that makes sense. If you're still a little bit confused, it'll get answered in the on location videos. But that's how you're gonna balance your, again, right ascension and your declination here on the SkyGuider Pro and Star Adventure. So that's all I got for you today. And hopefully this gives you a lot better results.